It's a new Firefox OS device, obviously. Uh, this is a device built entirely with technology. So what I mean by that is actually built uh, using our core Gecko engine, the same way that's in desktop Firefox and Firefox mobile uh, for Android. And so if you look at a, a, the way phones are built today, right? There's two parallel application stacks. There's the native application stack, and just on top of that, an entire web application stack. That's what you need to actually browse the web. There's web. I mean, that websites are all applications. Yeah. So that's what they are. So what we did is said, like, let's get rid of this middle layer and make an OS entirely out of the web uh, technology stack. It'll be fast, performant, uh, and work on very modest hardware devices. So what you see here is everything is actually a basic application. These are all JS, uh, HTML, and CSS. So if you look at this transitions, that's CSS. This is all web stuff. There's no native code running at all. And just to be sure, this is what most people would call a sort of a low-end device. It's like hardware-wise. Yeah, yeah. Know? It's it's a modest, very more modest hardware spec. It's a one gigahertz processor and about two to six megs of RAM. Uh, uh, 320 by 480 screen, I believe. Okay. So I think the telephonic was saying the retail street price for this would be about 100 bucks US. That's really low. That's yeah. Really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is same time. So a full feature smartphone. This is not a feature phone with some smartphone dressing, right? So you have a calendar integrates with actually even Exchange and ActiveSync. Uh, I have email, which actually the network here is really slow, so email is not the fastest. Um, we have also a range of applications. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, and now we have integration. I'll show you actually we have integration into our um, contacts, the Facebook contacts. So we can do is actually import Facebook contacts directly into our contacts app. Okay. Um, and when you do that, you can actually drill in and message them directly or wall post or look at the profile. This is the first step. We actually plan to integrate other social providers over time. Because we have ready the desktop browser, we have a social API that lets uh, other social providers integrate into the browser experience directly as we're browsing browser the web. And how, how are you going to do updates? Like, will you be able to roll directly over the air, or is it going to be a... Yeah, so updates are over the air. Um, that's already implemented in the device, in the testing. Um, like anything, you know, Different device manufacturers and carriers may have different update strategies. One thing when I have consistent as a Firefox experience is that you have regular security and also functional updates that you want. To. So um, this is not a disposable device. There's a lot of low end no smart devices that are basically a dead end. You can't update them, half the apps don't work on them anymore. This is not it. Yeah. This is a device we'll keep updating. We have a lot of experience building software for both very high and low devices. If the browser it has to run in, in very modest hardware specs, and XP all the way up to the latest operating systems. So, um, in addition, we have actually a mapping application built in from Nokia. Uh, it's a web-based, which hasn't been even used yet, web-based application. But it's uh, web-based doesn't mean that it has to go to the web all the time. You have the ability, actually the developer has a choice really in whether they, sorry, I missed my button, whether they uh, install the app locally or they host it on a remote server or both. You can actually do a hybrid app where you install part of the app locally and then it goes back and gets all the data needs on the fly. Well, this is the built-in uh, Nokia Maps app. It's actually really performant. The network here, like I said, is not that great, but otherwise this works really well. It has the usual features you expect out of a Maps application. Um, you can get overlays around the satellite, you can get a public chat for you, you get live traffic, for example. So, it's a full featured map application, really performant, built entirely in HTML, there's no native code running. You've got your own browser on there, obviously, and yes. um, can you do Flash and stuff like that, or is it? No, we don't support Flash, we really don't see any reason to. Um, so, I think what's happening is you see a convergence towards HTML as the default app. Yes. standard across the board. Um, so it really did when we built this thing, we actually just said, we don't need to invent a new model. I've had actually quite a number of developers come up to me when I'm working here and ask me, I mean, where do I sign up, where do I get your SDK, and I'm like, you don't, then you don't, like there is no. Like you do exactly what you do today, if you use Emacs and jQuery, use it. If you use, you know, Sencha and Dreamweaver, use it. Like nothing has changed. All we've done is taken the same platform, the same core, 
added new APIs specific to mobile, like stuff like context integration, like screen orientation, camera, network, all those things you expect on a full native stack on the OS. And also added more flexibility on how you deploy your content. You have completely remotely hosted content. You can have content you put in a package and you distribute without even having a website at all, right? You can do a hybrid app where I uh, use app cache or other storage techniques where when you download the application, the first time it runs to the phone and then it stays there and gets updated, next time it gets updated. But otherwise, it'll run, it'll load quickly. An example of like Tower of Jelly is actually a game that works this way. So I don't know if this has been run before. It has been run before, what it'll do, it'll go get the game from the web once, it'll download it, and then it'll be ready to play. The next time we launch it, it'll come up really quickly because it already has all the assets stored on the device. And this doesn't take up much storage, I guess. No, these are very modest applications. Thank you. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> um, and this is really, this is once again, no, this is no, there's no like secret demo sauce on this device, right? This is an app built out of HTML, um, and it runs. You can see it's smooth, it doesn't lag, it doesn't jitter. I'm thrilled with this game, so this is a good demo because it never lasts yeah, very long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were saying uh, at the front there that there's a try before you buy sort of system. Yeah, so. And carrier billing as well, you've got. So there's actually basically at least three different ways you can get applications for your device. We, one thing we do is we, we try a very open system. Like, we really, like the web is, is as successful as it is because it is open, it doesn't dictate a single way of doing anything. Yeah. So you have many ways of distributing applications. And so you can put an app in our marketplace. You can put your app on your web server, and whoever comes along says, oh, I want to install your app, there you go. Which is really what you do when you bookmark an app to the home screen anyway. We also have built in an app discovery engine, is what I call it anyway. And this is actually really, really powerful. What it does is, okay, let's well, search for Madonna, because it's right here. You pick a topic. What this will do, we'll get applications that are actually relevant to your topic. So not just looking for the name of the application. This is actually looking for applications relevant to you. It knows that it's a musician, right? Yeah. So it's looking for music apps from related to Madonna. And you click them on, so it's really a group shark. It's kind of cool. Let's check that out. You go against the app. It runs it locally. It doesn't just simply run it, but it actually does. It takes you to the part of the app that's relevant to what you're looking for. So now you're getting actual results from Madonna on group shark directly. And this is really powerful because it inverts the normal app store model. We have to go download and install a bunch of apps, try them, and see if they're even any good. If they are what you want. Here you get to use whatever apps you want. If you like them, you add them to your device and you keep them. It's like the way it works now. You go browse around, you find something cool, you bookmark it, you come back to it. If you don't, you don't go back. Right? So you end up with your account getting cluttered up with lots of apps and lots of junk you never actually use in your life. So how long have you guys been working on the Firefox OS? Um, well, I don't know if I was, it's a magic day when we started. I would say about a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Last year, Roller Course, we actually announced the plans and we showed the first versions of what we had back then. When we would do the Telefonica this year, that year we're back to show what we did in the past year. So we're the happiest and probably realistic. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess moving forward, you would like to see. Is, are you just going to go, right, we're just going to go with entry level phones, we want to see sort of mass market penetration that way, or are you going to be driving up towards smartphone as well? Would you like to see that? Would you like to see like quad four? So we announced, we announced partnerships, obviously, we have devices coming out with ZTE yeah, yeah. and Alcatel One Touch. We also have um, partnerships announced now with LG, and recently, just two days ago, arrived with Sony. I think what you're going to see is different device manufacturers will focus on different markets and different needs. And you're going to see devices spanning a wide spectrum of demographics and costs and functionality. Um, this is true for our approach to carrier markets. I think carriers actually do often understand their local market very well. This is an example actually of the app that I was talking about you can download offline and cache it. If I want to do this, I'll say download. This is timeout. You guys may be familiar with timeout. Um, it'll download, it'll start locally, and then when you want to use it, it'll be available to an offline with no internet access whatsoever, no lag. So that's 37 meg. Yep. Do you specify to the hardware manufacturers that it needs to be at least this amount of spec, this, this storage, you know, is the minimum amount we, we would allow? We, we don't really actually provide a minimum spec. I think we find that, that OEMs have a pretty good idea of what hardware they need to get the right experience on a device at a certain price point, and they've been pretty effective at that. Um, there's also leaves the door open for 
we're okay with Perry's customizing the actual user experience and the purpose of the device, right? So we had discussions that we have a very specific view of how the device should work for a given market, a given segment of their market. And we have the way you approach this problem, this is a problem that people bring up. So what, what happens, what do you keep, do you keep the, the, the completely fragmenting a bunch of different platforms and UIs? We have a couple of different tiers. We have like a, a Firefox OS device, it's one kind of a tier of expectation with the user experience from privacy, security, updates, other things like the user software you can still the device. But the other end of the spectrum is a, a device you could just simply take the open source, build it, call it whatever you want, an OEM, white label device, and you can go crazy. You can replace the UI, replace the screen model, whatever you want, right? So there's lots of different ways to integrate this kind of a operating system into your device to do what you want. We're not forcing you to do it one particular way. Okay, so that's downloading now. Yep. And you can use this without downloading it too. It's just gives the option if you want to to download and cache it. That's a very nice simple app. It gives you, you know, what you want, where you want it. Um, can you show the browser yet, or is that not quite? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I would say quite well done. We have your classic experience. We're sort of used to one, well, on that certain company that isn't here. <laughs> uh, you know, it's quite interesting this year actually seeing you guys here and the likes of Ubuntu and the, the other OS as well, but without Microsoft and without Google, Android being present. So it's uh, it's definitely the year of change for us. So. It's very, it's very smooth. Yeah. Considering the spec, well, it's very smooth. I'm not sure the video is going to work here because of the Wi-Fi yeah. and the 3G. I've had some really mixed uh, <laughs> yeah, disclaimer every, here. Everything's maxed out. Yeah, like we can't. I've, I've had video fail multiple times because of the connectivity. Don't worry, I think.